So let's start. Um, like I communicated, we'll be looking at um, what is expected of you when you are writing your research proposal. What do we expect of you? Uh, how should you write it? Um, that's what we will be about. <coughs> so, today uh, we are going to look at writing the introduction of your, of your research proposal. So that's what we shall, uh, that's what we are going to look at. Um, first of all, uh, the, the research introduction should look at it. Uh, it is very important to look at the research uh, introduction as an argument. Look at writing the research introduction as an argument. Um, an argument is not uh, you exchanging hot words with another person or another person of basically uh, having uh, opposing opinions about something. That is not the argument I'm talking about. When we, when we what we talk, and what I mean with argument is that um, is that where you have what we call a premise. And what we call a claim. Okay, that is what an argument is all about. An argument has premises and also a claim. So, when, when you say, for example, that uh, malnutrition is a big public health problem. That is a claim. That is a claim. And the, you need to provide evidence for, for why you say it is a very big problem. So this is where you bring uh, in health or in public health, uh, we talk about what we call body. Okay? When we talk, when we talk about body in public health, we are expecting numbers. Basically, we are expecting data uh, on two things, uh, morbidity and then two, on mortality. So with the mobility, you, you're going to tell us the number of people who have that problem. It's basically about prevalence and incidence. This is why I talk about prevalence and incidence. Okay, and then this is when you talk about people who have died. Because of the problem. Alternatively, if you don't, if you don't use these two, 
prevalence and incidence. Prevalence is the number of people who have the, who have the condition. Incidence is the number of people who get that condition in a given period or in a given location. If you don't use those two, then you're going to use what we call quality of life. Quality of life indicators. There are very many indicators of quality of life. Because if you get a particular disease, you are likely not going to experience uh, life compared to at people who do not have the disease. Your quality of life will decrease. There are some activities that you may be not be engaged in because of the disease that you have. Okay? So this is, this is all this data here. Yeah. Is evidence to the, pro the the statement that you have stated above here that uh, malnutrition is a very big uh, public health problem in a given country, and then you say it affects this number of people, and this leads to early death of this proportion. Are we clear at that point? Yes, it's clear. Yes. Okay, so you have a statement which is a claim, you back it up with evidence. And they will explain that in health, we look at uh, mobility and mortality. Those are basically concepts to do with what we call burden of disease. So when we talk about burden of disease, we talk about mortality. And so you give the you give the evidence that comes from other sources, uh, and therefore you should want you should reference. This is what people forget. Provide references, and for us. Uh, the reference should not be more than five years old. So since we are in 2024, we don't expect you to have references that are older than uh, 20, 2019. So we should have we should have references that are within that range. Anything beyond that is not something that we expect. But also, uh, the other thing that we, the exceptions, the exceptions uh, that we have here is if you have a topic that is historical in nature, a topic that is historical in nature. Okay? So, for example, you have a topic that looks at uh, uh, the the approaches used by the Ministry of, of Health in South Sudan to collect health data since independence 2021 means uh, that topic has the historical component so that means that um, the older references are acceptable it's okay to use them because your topic is the historical nature. But the moment there is no historical nature to the topic, then uh, 2019 should be... The other part that maybe you can also consider to have something old, for example, in public health, we have declarations. Okay, declarations. You can use those declarations. Um, and those declarations, of course, some of them are very old, but we still continue to use them. Declarations like the Ottawa Declaration in Health Promotion, uh, declarations like the Abuja Declaration, you can still use that to reference. Uh, declarations that, for example, about primary health care in 1978, 
those are okay to mention them. And if you if you provide, for example, you are writing about primary health care, and you give me a, a reference of 1978, that is that means that you are looking about the original document. That's okay to to put. Okay. Um, so that is the. That's about the first part of the introduction. Uh, for example, people who are doing business business courses, if you I will use a, um, or yet stop it, which is about uh, data analytics. Um, if, for example, your topic is about data analytics, you can say. Um, the adoption of data analytics is on an increase. According to the Forbes magazine of this year, 10 out of um, uh, 10 out of the 20 um, major global organizations are using this system of data analytics. That is still to to back up, to back up the a statement that you have stated. So that is usually the first part of, of the introduction. The other thing that you need to, to that, that can be helpful in you writing the introduction is you looking at the, the introduction as a pitch. And it's a moment for you to do what you call pitching. It's a pitching moment. Pitching, which I believe all of you should know uh, and should master it, is that when, for example, you meet someone, for example, if if uh, I meet someone and I want, uh, I know that person has resources that they can invest in Bristol. I only need one minute with that person for me to tell him, to, to convince him to invest the resources in Bristol. Okay, that's pitching. I need to pitch within one or two minutes. And actually, that's why when we, you are doing the research proposal defense, we give you 15 minutes. And we, so far, none of you have actually, <laughs> none of you has met that. Uh, has used that, that time appropriately. 15 minutes is a lot of time uh, for you to, to be able to pinch, pitch, pitch your, your work. So the second argument I'm making is that look at the research introduction as a pitching moment. Pitching in business is getting someone interested in your business such that they can invest in your business or they can buy into your idea and invest in it. That is what we call pitching. People who have resources, usually who invest in businesses, we call them investors. They can be of different types, angel investors, capital investors, uh, whatever you can call them, they don't really have a lot of time. So that means that if you meet them, you need to, to give them exactly this, <clears throat> what is eye-catching about your, your proposal, your business idea. It's like you're competing. Actually, research is about competing. Because you don't just do research just for the sake of it. You do research to create improvement. Okay? In business operations, in health, whatever it is. So that means that resources have to be invested into this research for this improvement to happen. Okay? This improvement definitely means profits if it is if you are talking in terms of business in terms of business if it is in terms of health 
The prophet is having what you call better health outcomes. That's the prophet, basically. Better health outcomes. That patients are going to be satisfied with the service because uh, they are going to be attended to very fast. Their diagnostic procedures are going to be uh, very easy, painless, uh, no more waiting hours and no issues of misdiagnosis, issues of medication errors. That's the improvement we are talking about. But all of them lead to better health outcomes and better patient experiences. So when you're doing research, you're competing for resources. Okay? And if you're competing for resources, it means that you should be eye-catching and you should know how to pitch. Okay? Now, that is where, if you're going to use the, the business language still, we talk about the pains. Where are the pains? The pains. Um, when, when you talk about pains, we are saying, uh, for example, in business operations, where are clients facing a lot of challenges? Where are the customers facing a lot of challenges? We call those pains. So if you identify the, the problems, then you're addressing the pains. So if you're writing the, the research introduction, it's like you you're stressing about the pains and what needs to be done about the pains such that someone can really give you resources to you to conduct research such that the findings can improve and finally by the way let's see the research introduction that's it there's nothing more okay so um, let me use examples about your topics such that you see how you write the introduction. So let me check. Give me your topic and then I'll, I'll, I'll try to give you an angle to it. Mm. Who, 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 who can put up their hand if they, they tell me their research topics, then I try to frame the problem. Edward. Yes, Edward. Yeah. Um, mine is uh, about the prevalence of uh, miscarriage among women uh, attending. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Gaina. Prevalence of miscarriage. Yeah. So, we're going to look at, at that topic in terms of an argument. That's the first thing, where we said an argument has uh, a statement that, is, that has to be backed up. You make a claim and you qualify that claim by providing evidence, which is the evidence is basically the premise that I'm saying so and so based on this. The premise is the evidence. Okay. And then after that, you, you will have an element of pitching. That's what we are going to pitch. Two things, pitching. Pitching and the argument. That's, those are the two things we are going to use here. So first of all, and the other thing that I want you to know that I, I talked about earlier, but I did not emphasize it, is what I call the framing. Framing. Framing is about how you are going to structure that argument. Hmm? So you have one argument, two, that argument should be well framed, 
framing and then three the element of pitching should come in okay we said that pitching is making sure that you catch people's attention such that they can be very much interested in your problem and uh, in pitching you need to be able to to point out to the pains that are existing ah, yeah that is that's enough that, that's enough so <clears throat> i i can start by defining what miscarriage is uh, miscarriage such that my readers understand uh, miscarriage is the loss of pregnancy um, which duration do we do we qualify here according to the is 20 weeks 20 weeks right yeah yeah so you put your definition properly and then you reference okay and then you make a claim that is, is one of the major issues that is affecting women's health globally. So that is a claim. Now you provide evidence. Uh, this number of women die because of, so that is number of deaths, and then many of them have got issues to do with the disabilities, which we we, we call as, we call them as uh, morbidities. Okay, miscarriage is also associated with morbidities. So, which morbidities are those? Then you explain them. Issues to do with uh, uh, infertility, for example. Someone gets a miscarriage during the evacuation. The, uh, the, the their uterus is uh, damaged, and then it is removed, so they become sterile. So that's another another problem. Okay, so you quantify this evidence. Okay, so. Someone, you have opened someone's eyes to look at you. Hey, okay, this is the problem you are having. Okay. Um, so now you go ahead. The, the, the next part is now framing. Framing. And framing and pitching are going, actually going concurrently. Concurrently. There is a... I don't know if I can ever get a, a better a better translation, but there is a Luganda saying uh, that uh, they, 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 this, this local food we call motere. Um, the Luganda say that if you don't package the motere very well, no one will buy it. Uh, I don't know, do we have uh, a local translation for it? Which which translation, which other translation can we use for that? I believe some of you here know what motere is, right? Yes. Yeah. So the Baganda have that saying that if you don't package the motere very well, no one will buy it. So it's the same thing with the it's the same thing with the framing. Framing is like packaging. How do you package the problem? Okay, how do you package the problem? Um, for example, uh, if, if you're a parent, you're a parent, uh, you, have, you, have, you have a child who comes to you and say, Daddy, I've washed your car um, I've also done my homework, okay? So I want to watch TV. Definitely, there is no way you're going to refuse them from watching the TV because 
they have washed your car, they have done their homework, now they want to watch TV. Definitely you give them the remote and they watch the TV, right? And then you have this child who comes, um, that they give me the remote, I want to see cartoon. There is, a, there, is, there is one where you're going to feel like, yeah, I should give them the report, the, the remote. There is another one who you are not going to give the remote. Who you are going to ask, have you done your homework? Have you showered? You get it? That the problem comes in when they have not framed their point very well. So also framing here becomes very very important. So we go back. So how do you frame the problem? Actually, before you start with this definition and giving this number, already you have you have framed the problem. The framing the problem or framing the argument. You need to frame it. So the framing makes you pivot. I'm using another word here. Pivot your argument properly. Your topic will land naturally. Land it naturally. Naturally fit into something. That's what I'm calling pivot. The topic will pivot naturally. It will fall into it exactly as you have framed it. And then that means that if it pivots uh, naturally, the objectives, the research questions, the conceptual framework all will be very okay. Very okay. So, how do you frame this argument? One of the ways of framing this argument is to say that data is needed, but data is insufficient. Or oh, data is needed, but the way that data is collected is bad. I want to collect it in a better way. Or oh, data is needed, but here the data that we have is only focusing on other things. If you have not looked at, at this, but for me this is what I want to look at. There is something new I want to look at. Okay? So, uh, we go back. We say miscarriage is defined as this. It continues to, work to, to be responsible for this number of deaths contributing to a lot of morbidities and things like that. Um, in, the, in developing countries, the situation is dire because, uh, uh, because of the health systems are weak and uh, or because uh, the, legal, the legal grounds. This is also another very big problem that uh, people are not re re reporting miscarriages because they will be caught in the health facilities. The, 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 the authorities may think they have aborted. Okay? It's an abortion. So they don't report. Okay? So you... There are a lot of reasons as to why we are not having sufficient data. And that may be also if you have illegal, do you have abortion being illegal? There is no way you're going to have sufficient data on, uh, on miscarriages. You're going to have estimates. Okay? You're going to have estimates that do not reflect the actual issue. So it is still positive fact that there is insufficiency. But how you frame that insufficiency is very important. And that's why POT is. Is the key. Now, when you say that um, uh, miscarriages are underreported in developing countries because in most of these countries, um, abortion is illegal. And if any woman reports to a health facility with the vaginal bleeding, they have to get authorization from the police. And this 
is an inhibitor to them. Uh, this inhibits them from reporting directly to the health facilities. They often resort to uh, unlicensed health facilities for informal uh, or what you call traditional medicine or alternative medicine. Okay. Therefore, in this data, in this study, we are going to look at the prevalence of miscarriages as reported in an informal or in, in a non-government institution. Because in the non-government institution, maybe the, the process is different. If they report with a vaginal bleeding, maybe they don't report. They, they, don't, they, don't require the, they don't require the clearance from police. Something like that to warrant to warrant if you when you get time you check for these things. What is the meaning of warrant? What's the meaning of of warrant in an argument? Okay, so here for this of preference, you can take any direction, the, the discussion of how you're going to carry out this study. Actually, the justification becomes natural here. When you say that there is insufficient data, and then you explain that the insufficient data is because government facilities need this and this and that for uh, caring, to, to care for uh, patients with miscarriages, therefore the reported the reported prevalence of miscarriages in this facility can be misleading. And therefore there is a need to conduct this study within the community. Okay? Now that means that uh, there is no way I'm going to ask you about the study population and in the study area because you already put it there. You have qualified it. A warrant qualifies the argument. A warrant qualifies the argument. A warrant qualifies the argument. So it becomes natural for the topic to be what that you become hankered, you become hankered, your argument is hankered. And it is very difficult for you to refute, refute an argument that has, that has a warrant. It has a warrant, it has a premise, it has a claim and all the things are okay, there is no way. And that is why, for me, when I'm looking at people, students' research, I see it is flowing. I just said move to the next chapter. Because I've, I've, seen, I've seen that you have touched all the major areas. Okay, so let's have one, let us have one more, more example. Then we can, another topic that we can,